everybody, this is a creative idea share. <laughs> This is a creative idea share that you can watch from there to help you be aware. You can even watch it in your underwear. A creative idea share. Recently at BLC Theater, we did the show Pinocchio. And not every production of Pinocchio needs to actually have a Pinocchio puppet, but we wanted a Pinocchio puppet for our particular production and I was racking my brain trying to figure out how to do that. Uh, at first I started with just some ropes and a wig head and a, a skeleton that I made out of closet rod and I had magnets on the bottom of the shoes of the puppet and I was trying to see if I could get the puppet to walk because that's something that we wanted to see. We wanted to see how does Pinocchio uh, move from being a block of wood to an actual puppet to a human being. Well, anyways, uh, it was on me to try to build a puppet that was a Pinocchio puppet, and this is Pinocchio. Uh, and he can move his mouth and he can talk, he can look around. Uh, and so I kinda wanna walk you through how I uh, made uh, this, this puppet. So one of the first things I did is I, I, I went out and I got some of these styrofoam balls and you can get these at your hobby center. Uh, for me, it's Hobby Lobby. Uh, but I, I was able to like cut off the sides of the head uh, and I came up with this little oval thing. And then uh, at least, you know, again too, whenever I don't know how to make something full size, I always start with a small model. And so this was kind of my head model. This looks really weird right now, but, uh, but I was able to uh, shape a face uh, out of some clay, and I'll show you the epoxy clay that I was using. It's Magic Sculpt. Uh, and, and by the way, throughout this video, I'll, I'll, I'll refer to some links that I've got in the description where if you need to get this stuff, you can get it through uh, some of the links that I post. And they're affiliate links, and they actually do help this channel if you're interested in clicking on those. Uh, so this was, my, this was my, the first thing that I started with my head. Then I got one of these. I thought I was going to make uh, the head out of a round styrofoam ball because that's what I did with the small one. But what I ended up finding again at my hobby store, uh, and you can find these on Amazon, I, and uh, I'll, I'll leave a link. It's not really a wig head, but it is sort of like a wig head. I found a female uh, drawing uh, head, <laughs> uh, and it's made out of styrofoam. And so I was able to shape uh, Pinocchio's head here. I know this is really weird when I'm moving him around. I was able to shape Pinocchio's head from this uh, this particular uh, styrofoam head that I found. Now you wouldn't, looking at Pinocchio here, you wouldn't think that he came from a head that maybe looked like uh, a female face, uh, but that's, that's what he was. Uh, and uh, basically what I, I had to do first is I had to cut the channel. I had to cut the neck off of the styrofoam head because it's got this neck attached to it. Uh, and then I was able to save the jaw piece. So this jaw piece is the jaw piece from the, the actual head. Uh, I knew that I wanted his mouth to be able to move and talk, uh, and so I, I, I kept that. But what I ended up doing then was I made this channel uh, underneath his head here, uh, and then uh, I had to basically form some lips. So I wanted Pinocchio to look like he was smiling. I had to somehow create a mouth and I had to have, have some lips that look good. Uh, these lips were formed, there's, there's really, it's just only the bottom lip that I had to worry about. The top really wasn't anything. But these lips were formed, uh, I gave him a little smile and these were formed with uh, magic sculpt uh, epoxy resin. It's, it's this stuff. And again, I'll, I'll leave a link uh, in the description for this stuff. This stuff is fantastic. Uh, and what it is, is it starts, uh, you've got the, the molding compound and then you've got the hardening compound. You mix equal parts of this 
uh, and uh, and it's very shapeable and moldable. It's a clay, and it ends up just looking. It, it, it just works really well. I mean, you can sand it uh, and you can shape it to whatever you want it to be. Uh, and so um, that's what that's what I, I use for this stuff. And this stuff, a little bit of this goes a long, long way. I've been using this for uh, two years now. now. Now to make Pinocchio talk, I was scanning the internet for ideas on how to do this. What I ended up doing was just, and it was it worked perfectly well for us, is just um, a, a gravity uh, mechanism. Uh, so you can sort of see, if I show him in profile here, you can sort of see what is happening. What I did was I created a, a hinged, I had two pieces of quarter inch plywood and they were just hinged like this. And the bottom piece, which is this piece right here, this is the, the piece that goes all the way through. This bottom piece was the part that was elongated. The short piece is what creates the roof of his mouth right here, and then consequently makes his teeth. Uh, this was sort of a happy accident. I didn't, when I first carved this out, mean for this to be his teeth. It just worked out that way. We painted them white, uh, and it's, it's, it works out great. But there's just a small little hinge way in the back there uh, that, uh, that puts those two pieces together. And uh, what you see right here as his tongue, that's the piece of wood. That's the same piece of wood as what's back here. Okay, uh, so I needed a counterweight, so I've actually got back here a nut. You can sort of see it's just a, uh, a big uh, nut that goes on a big bolt. I guess I don't know the size. Uh, same size nut back here. Uh, this nut actually I filled with uh, lead sinkers. I, I, uh, I took some lead sinkers that are, you know, I raided my fishing tackle box, uh, smashed them with a hammer so they became like pennies, uh, and I just stacked them up in there so that this had some weight. Because this side back here needed to be heavier than the mouth side so that when I pull this up, it activates the mouth, okay? So I've got my Pinocchio actor who is operating the arms, one arm, uh, and moving his head around like this. And he can, he can act with them and, hey everybody, you know, talk like, uh, move, move the mouth while he's talking, uh, while she was talking. Uh, our Pinocchio was played expertly by uh, actress Mija Over and she really killed it. Uh, anyways, uh, and then the next thing that I needed to do was I needed to hollow out the nose. It's so weird to say it, but I drilled into the head of Pinocchio uh, and, and, um, and then put a nose on, on here. And the nose is actually made out of stuff that you can buy. This is a uh, EVA foam rod. This is the same material and it's very flexible because uh, I wanted, if, if, uh, if, if this Pinocchio was to get dropped, I didn't want the nose to snap off or to break, so it's flexible, uh, and I felt like I could repaint it if I needed to. Uh, and then uh, the eyes were made out of ping pong balls. So I took a ping pong ball and I cut it in half, and then with a scissors, I just shaped eye forms, and then I put those things over the eyes that were actually on the mannequin head. The rosy cheeks were made out of EVA foam too. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this is <laughs> silly winks. Uh, that's what I use for the cheeks, uh, but it's uh, EVA foam is, cosplayers are using this stuff a lot, and uh, it's, this is not necessarily the highest density stuff. Sorry that it's dirty, it was just on my messy workbench. Uh, but uh, I just cut out two circles, uh, put it on there, and then we were able to paint, paint it uh, our nice and rosy cheek colors. And then uh, my student, Holly Harris, uh, was able to paint the, the head to look uh, kind of, you know, cool and cartoony. She had a, a neat app on her iPad that she was actually able to come up with something that she thought looked really cool and then she mimicked it on the head. So um, what, what I had then was kind of a Pinocchio gun because you got to imagine there was no body here. I didn't have the body attached yet. So I was just walking around the halls with this talking head. 
something like this, I was kind of Pinocchio gunning it. Okay, and while I've got the Pinocchio gun head thing here, I can sort of show you the handle. The handle is made out of PVC tube, uh, and I just uh, drilled a hole in the back of the head, and it's going in about two or three inches into the back there. Uh, and then uh, I used hot glue to affix it to the head. So that way I had sort of a trigger point for the paddle that basically operated the mouth. So since this is just styrofoam and it's, it's uh, the lightweight styrofoam too, you know that whenever you're gonna cut into a styrofoam ball like this, you're gonna get all those little beads uh, of, of styrofoam plastic all over the place. Well, same case here. So what I do is I, I covered uh, I carved him out the way I wanted his face to be shaped uh, using uh, sandpaper essentially and, and sometimes uh, some files and rasps. Uh, but uh, then I coated it with uh, Roscoe Crystal Gel. That's this stuff right here. So uh, this stuff is a, a, a see-through, it's a, it's a clear gel that uh, uh, you can, you know, you can sort of see what it's like. I don't know if this is showing up. That's just sort of the gel right there what it dries like. Uh, and so I'm covering the whole, many, many coats, you, you know, so I want, I want there to be a, a solid shell so that, you know, you can't just dent this so easily. So, you know, you're, you're basically creating a, uh, a, a solid plastic shell over the styrofoam and this crystal gel is really, really good for that stuff too. So I would, I'm a big fan of this stuff. Uh, for years I was using uh, sculpture arts coating, uh, sculptor coat, they went out of business. This is really the same product. It's really, really good. Uh, and so I uh, use it. I'll leave the link for that too, if you're interested. And then I had to figure out how I was going to uh, create the body. Uh, the body was made out of basically, at least in the chest, the shoulders down to the pelvis area. I made a skeleton out of wood. Uh, and then I clad that with uh, basic pieces of, of styrofoam. And, and just for fun, I gave him, I made him ripped. He was, he's all buff. Uh, he has abs and a strong looking chest and everything. Uh, and so uh, I always knew what side was the front. <laughs> uh, and so from there, I was able to, one of the hardest things in making Pinocchio here was creating the, the joints. These are not wooden arms. These are made out of the EVA foam. And let me just sort of walk you through exactly what I've got here. Okay, so Pinocchio's limbs were all made out of EVA foam. You can maybe see here best. What I had to do was I had to clad four pieces of EVA foam that were uh, the 10 millimeter EVA foam pieces, and I had to clad them together. Uh, and so here, if you look in his joint here, you can see here's a piece, here's a piece, here's a piece, here's a piece. So four, one, one, two, three, four, all put together. Uh, and uh, same thing with his legs. He is then just, uh, these, these legs took the, the, the legs and the arms, the joints took the longest time to figure out. So I'm gonna linger here a little bit. I don't have a great way to describe uh, how to make this, but the, what I did was I was just, I was Googling puppet joints all the time. And finally, I just uh, uh, came up with patterns that worked. And so these are the joints for the, for the legs or for his knees. And then his elbow, similar thing. Just a, really, the arms and the legs are only like two inches difference in length. And then the great thing about EVA foam is that you can take a razor knife uh, just like this, and then you can create little uh, wood grain patterns in, in the uh, EVA foam. This is high density EVA foam, so it expands a little less. Uh, but you just, uh, you, you, you striate this and you make your wood grain patterns, and then you take a heat gun to it, 
and then these all expand. And so then the audience can see all this wood grain looking kind of stuff and you can kind of get a wood grain on his hands and stuff too. The hands were the same, same kind of thing. I, uh, I, I carved the hands out of the EVA foam. The nice thing about EVA foam too is with heat, if you, if you apply heat to it, you can bend it. And so I was able to bend his hands to make them look a little bit more uh, humanoid. Uh, and, uh, and then the feet were just blocks. Uh, and and uh, you can see here where uh, it was two pieces of that 10 millimeter EVA foam here. One, two, just like that. I didn't really know what was going to be the best way to attach the head to the body. Uh, but what I ended up doing was I drilled a hole the long way through his neck, uh, all the way down to a kind of a midpoint in his torso where I was able to tie a piece of tie line. And this is just like parachute cord uh, tie line. And I was able to drill a hole all the way up the skull, all the way up through his head. And so uh, I put a fender washer here on top and all that's holding Pinocchio's head to his body is this piece of tie line. I gave myself some extra, I thought just in case I needed to have his head float a little higher or get a little closer, like up, like up and down like this. Um, but I never changed it. Once I put it like this, I just, I kept it like this. This keeps his head free to move. We're able to hide uh, the stuff on top with the hat. Uh, and, uh, and so this is, this is how his head is connected. It's just by that, that single string right there. You can sort of see there's just that single piece of tie line all anchored here at the top like that. So this is bearing the full weight of the puppet. And it's not so heavy because he's not made completely out of wood. There's wood in here, but uh, the EVA foam is, is really pretty light stuff. And so my, uh, my actress who's playing Pinocchio is really able to articulate his arms uh, and make him look around and move. And it was an awful lot of fun. Okay, unfortunately, I don't have great pictures uh, of attaching the legs and the arms to the torso. Uh, but really, all I did was I drilled holes in the wooden part of the skeleton, and I drilled holes in the top parts of the arms and of the legs, and I just used the tie line. I just tied them on. And that made them very flexible. And then let's quickly take a look at this costume. So uh, these, uh, these shorts, and the top, they were not a perfect match for what our Pinocchio was wearing, but man, were, it, it was really close. And nobody in the audience would ever say, oh, <laughs> they're wearing different clothes. Uh, so uh, a big shout out to uh, Gianna Peterson for costuming this, uh, this puppet uh, and all our Pinocchio puppets. That's right, I said all our Pinocchio puppets. I am gonna get, I'm gonna quickly show you a few others, some miniatures that we made for our show too. Now, look at these. These are just pieces of steel uh, that uh, I wanted Pinocchio to be able to walk to. And the, the way I had figured how to do that was by using these rods, okay? On each of these rods, I've got a magnet. These magnets were going to come in from the back uh, and click on to these uh, pieces of steel. And I thought we could operate the the uh, Pinocchio legs with these things. Magnets are very unreliable for this kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, so again, I was learning an awful lot. So what I ended up using are these parachute buckles, <laughs> uh, which look like this. You've seen these before. These are on, you know, athletic clothes or, or whatever. You just got that end that clips into this end and they snap in. So uh, what I did is I took the same stick that I had this magnet on and I put the parachute buckle on there instead. You can see it. So that's the parachute buckle on there and it's just kept on with a zip tie. Okay, I have become a giant fan of zip ties. It's like 
Zip ties are, are fantastic things. So what I did is I zip tied these parachute buckles right under the knee of Pinocchio and then these sticks could come in and now I had a much more reliable way of operating the, the legs. So now with this, we could actually make Pinocchio run through the town uh, with a second operator. So I would have somebody behind the primary Pinocchio operator uh, just operating the legs. Again, and, and this is all done in full view of the audience. The audience can see the operators, but the audience suspends that. The audience doesn't give it a second thought. They realize that you're creating a convention. Uh, they are now seeing the operators operate the puppet. But what's so magical about it, and what I love about this is the operators just disappear. The operators go away. The audience focuses so much on the puppet that they just forget about the operators. It really is theater magic, and I, I, I love it. Okay, so we wanted to remind the audience throughout the play too, though, that Pinocchio is a puppet, that he's sometimes, uh, you know, we have to consider him smaller than an actual human being. And so there is a time where he's riding on the back of a crow, uh, and this puppet is basically operated just like this. Really pretty easy. So what's happening here? Uh, I've just got two operating rods, uh, and one rod that I'm holding, and it's going up to the base of the crow. Uh, I didn't feel like inventing the whole world here, and so I bought the crow on Amazon. This is just a crow decoy. Uh, and then I had a buddy of mine, August Jeske, uh, cut out some wings from EVA foam. Again, it's this stuff, but uh, this was the, uh, the two millimeter thick uh, EVA foam. Uh, and then uh, this was just a, one of those drawing mannequins. Uh, I'll, show, I'll show you a picture here what it <laughs> looked like, but uh, it comes you know, just on a wire stand. So I was able to uh, basically take a little piece of dowel rod, I drilled a hole into his head and, uh, and made a nose. So the audience, all they gotta see is the nose to know that it's Pinocchio. And then uh, he's just on there uh, via this little post. This post is the post that comes with the, the drawing mannequin. And then I had it come all the way through to the chest of the, you can actually see the, uh, the screw. It, uh, this is the part that actually screws into the base that holds the mannequin up. But uh, I took that off and I just screwed it right into the chest of the, uh, of the decoy for the crow here. Oh, and I've got some eye screws back here. I'm turning it all the way upside down, you can see these eye screws just to guide these rods. Uh, all of these uh, puppets that I'm showing you, uh, the clothes were all made not by me, they were made by Gianna Peterson. She did a great job. And then finally, uh, we have Pinocchio swimming away from the shark. So in our production, we've got a shark puppet. I've got a whole nother video on the shark puppet. I'll leave, I'll leave a link to it here if you're interested in seeing that. But uh, the, cause the shark puppet was a whole nother thing and deserved its own video. But uh, the, we needed little Pinocchios that were swimming away from the shark. So this is what it is. It's a Ken doll. This is just a you know, from the Mattel company or whoever makes Barbies. <laughs> uh, I went to Walmart, I got a Ken doll, I erased his face with a Dremel tool, and here's the funny part is, I, I had to bend his neck. So I, I took a heat gun and I bent his neck so that it was facing more forward, because I, I wanted him as he was swimming to be looking forward, not down. Uh, and he had this crazy pompadour hairdo, so I sort of sliced off some of that, and then I put, uh, I put some more of uh, this magic sculpt stuff in there. You could fill this with just about anything. You could probably fill it with uh, just foam or with uh, hot glue or whatever. Again, his hands are connected to the, the operating rods with zip ties. Zip ties, zip ties, man. I'm telling you what, zip ties. And then these things just paddle. And then later, uh, Pinocchio, of course, finds Geppetto in the belly of the shark and they have to escape. So what we ended up doing, again, same thing, is we made the Geppetto Pinocchio rig. The audience got a big laugh out of this. Uh, when they came out of, the, uh, out of the shark and then suddenly they see this, 
here's Geppetto and here's Pinocchio and they're holding on to each other. Uh, this was same thing, they, but they got a big laugh out of this. Uh, how is Pinocchio or how is Geppetto holding on to uh, Pinocchio? Well, I drilled holes through his hands and again, it's the uh, zip ties. I zip tied his hands together. And then again, the zip ties here are holding Pinocchio to the, the operating uh, rods like this. And then this rod is just, it holds the, uh, the puppets static. But, but we had some fun. I mean, they were swimming through the water like this. I mean, they could do all this kind of stuff like they were riding the waves. You know what a Ken doll face looks like. I mean, it is heavily painted, big eyes. Uh, we had just erased all that stuff. You know, you, if you erase a Ken doll, they, they look kind of like Geppetto does here. So that is the details. That is the details. That's how we made a Pinocchio puppet for the stage. You can do Pinocchio without a puppet, uh, but uh, it was an extra layer of fun, I thought, to have an actual puppet and to actually have a bunch of little Pinocchio puppets in our production. Uh, the audience recognizes that as kind of going the extra mile and as something sort of special. And, uh, and I think they really appreciated what they saw. And so, uh, that's what I've got. So this has been a creative idea share. You've been watching Hey Pete, uh, it's a creative life. My name's Pete. If you like this stuff, uh, consider subscribing. Uh, and until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.